Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to be talking about the four techniques every single therapist on the planet needs to learn if they want to create rapid breakthroughs. And I bet when you've had really fast breakthroughs, you've done these things. So let's look at this. Now, the uh, primary thing I, I need to outframe here is this isn't about like inductions, techniques, scripts, pre-talks, etc. I like there's a plenty of content already out there. And when you look at it, uh, those discussions are great. I think they're very fruitful. I just don't work that way. It's been years since I've used any of that stuff. Um, and ultimately, it kind of appears to be, in some sense, subtle variations of existing techniques, right? I'm sure you've noticed that if you've taken more than one training, it kind of is like the thing I learned before. There's always a gold nugget here or there that you can learn from those approaches. But I don't really want to do that. I'd rather share with you the things that I actually use to help clients create fast breakthroughs. Cause, and there's plenty of content out there if you want that. So let's dive into this. The first thing is utilizing unconscious communication. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this a bunch. You've seen it in my demos and all that. Um, this is the, this is, this is dynamite, right? This is why sessions with me are so fast. And uh, my students report back, you know, it used to take me eight, 12 sessions to create a breakthrough with these presenting problems, I, I'm done in a session here. Some of them, it's like, I'm just doing a little bit of hypnosis at the end, having them close their eyes because I'm freaked out about what happened. So utilizing unconscious communication, right? And this is a skill you're gonna continue to develop for the rest of your life. The unconscious mind will always surprise you. Um, I wanna dive deep into these and they kind of all relate to each other. So I'm gonna kind of do my best to work through them and then tie it all together for you so you can start applying these right away. Uh, the next thing I have on my list here is uh, learning, learning, right? Uh, now, not learning more hypnosis, more ways to create hypnotic phenomena. Um, developing the ability to learn about your client. This is incredibly powerful. And to help your client learn about themselves, both in relation to this problem and outside of that. When we engage, uh, session work is an opportunity to help that client learn. For one, it takes the pressure off us, it takes the pressure off them. And this is why I teach what I call the exploration and discovery phase so much with my students. When we're exploring and discovering what's really going on, it makes this work so much easier. Think about it. When I started, I remember uh, maybe I'd have a presenting problem show up that I hadn't worked with before. So I go to my peers, hey guys, what do you think I should do with this presenting problem? And they would, it's a well-intentioned advice and I didn't know any better, right? So I would uh, say, hey, here's the presenting problem. And so that's a guess by the client we know that is hypnotist. And now I have a bunch of people also guessing based off of a guess what that client needs, right? This is why it's going to take a while to get a breakthrough. And when I say take a while, we got to keep that in relation to other change work modalities out there. This is very fast. Even the, even the most traditional hypnosis approach is way quicker than a lot of modalities that exist out there. Well, I think it's quicker than pretty much all of them. I mean, you know, there's always going to be some some variables there, but you, you get my point, right? I'm talking about going from something that's very fast, making it super fast. And so the reason using unconscious communication is so important is it's there that client's unconscious mind telling you what to do, right? If it tells you what to do, we might as well just do it. So essentially the client can become the script, the pre-talk, the induction, the deepener, whatever, right? The protocol, you get my point here. So this is, this is, this is a superpower. This is something you have to develop, start learning to utilize this. Um, and to do that though, let me share the other things, right? So we've talked about learning. We've talked about uh, utilizing unconscious communication. The next one that comes to mind here is listening. Uh, this is, I think the highway for a lot of folks in terms of really starting to get good at this stuff. Listening to understand the client, understand what's going on. Not listening to like, oh, is that a regression? I put better pull up my regression technique now. We don't need that. The client will regress if they need to. I have this all the time with folks. I don't tell them to do anything. Listening to understand, not to figure out what you wanna say, listening um, in such a way that we're not focused on what we need to do. Because ultimately it's not about us, remember? We're not asking that client now to meet us at our process. We don't need it. They, Their mind can create the process. This is why we're working organically, right? It's kind of a fun way to do things. And it's really trippy to see the power and magnitude of the unconscious mind right in front of you like this. I We don't need to even be concerned with any of this stuff anymore. Next one here, incredibly powerful. This wraps up our list. It's silence. 
Oh my goodness. Silence is the most powerful technique. It's like, I don't know how many times in a session where I maybe felt compelled to speak, but I know better, right? Because I'm really paying attention to that person. And just me hesitating and speaking, just holding off a little bit longer, blows my mind. Something comes out of that person, an insight, something about what's really going on. And now we're really cooking with something here. And when I do that, I've had people just spontaneously get the breakthrough in those moments. Like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? Why am I smoking? I don't need to do this. And then you start testing them, right? Start testing them, trying to figure out what's really going on or, or if this is actually what they needed. And it's like, you can't break them all because of silence, right? Allowing them the opportunity to really experience what they're feeling without judgment uh, and not trying to get them to manipulate it in some way. Right? We don't need to do that. We don't need to like take them to a time when they felt better. For all we know, feeling really, really bad about the problem is the thing that's going to motivate them to run away from it, right? I mean, this is this is, seems obvious when it's said out loud, right? But a lot of times as hypnotherapists and we're so well-intentioned and all we really want to do is help people, um, we rob them of the lessons that pain can provide them. And uh, I, I think this can often be a huge mistake. Uh, they don't have to necessarily be feeling good the entire time they're in your office. They need a breakthrough. That's what they're paying you for, right? They don't care about hypnosis. So, so understand, these are the four principles. Let's go through them again. So utilizing unconscious communication, silence, learning, and listening to understand, right? Ultimately, this is kind of a bonus thing. We're, we're learning to utilize awareness, too, as we apply these principles into our work. So now it's about guiding that person's awareness to places it hadn't previously been before. Things that were probably blocked a bit by the unconscious mind, right? There's always a bit of that, uh, the, the conscious unconscious mind, there's a conflict there, we've got to resolve that. Now the person has choice. Now, they could, now we just allow this stuff to integrate and process. We don't put expectations on the outcome. And imagine working this way with people. Now there's no pressure on you whatsoever. And there's no pressure on that client because we're just learning. You see how we're working differently? So I hope these helps. Please put these into your session, start practicing with them, start playing with them. Ultimately, mastery is gonna come through working with real clients, right? Actually working with clients is the path to mastery. This is how you're gonna get, you know, become one of the best in the industry at what you do. So I hope these help. Please comment below with any questions you have. Take care, everybody.